I'm going to continue the, the, talk, the series of talks that we started. They deal mainly with ministry, with work called Towels and Titles. And today's um, talk is going to be titled, When Potential is Greater Than Your Position. It will not only apply to the ministry, it will also apply to people who work outside of the church and who have certain positions that they feel are below their potential. We will take a reading from book of Acts chapter 6. It's the same verses that I've been reading for the last three, ver three Sundays. Verse 2 of chapter 6. I want to remind you that the notes for this message are on the YouVersion Bible app. They will stay there only for one week and after that they get put into podcast and YouTube and our website where people can download PDF uh, file uh, sermon notes. Acts chapter 6 and verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about the importance of being full of Him. The week before that we talked about the importance of that ministry and work is more spiritual. That we need to develop structures and systems and that we need to also learn to delegate. And be faithful in small things. Seek out from among you seven good men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit wisdom, and whom we can appoint over this business. Verse 4. But that we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And verse 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And if we skip to verse 8, it says, And Stephen, full of faith and power did great wonders among the people and if you skip through the whole chapter 7 is pretty much a pdf of Stephen's sermon which is the longest sermon in the book of acts like peter's sermons they were like bulletin points just few few verses quickly to the point Stephen this guy had a sermon i mean she pre he preached for so long it was 60 verses, the whole chapter of 7, the longest sermon in the book of Acts. What I want to present this morning in few moments that I have with us is that Stephen's potential, Stephen's anointing, Stephen's grace, Stephen's gift was so big. The Bible says he was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of faith. He was full of power. He had miracle signs and wonders on his belt and the guy could preach. That's an apostle to me. That's an archbishop right there. That's a guy, Catholic Church, like voting for the Pope. This guy got some stuff under it. This guy has a resume. But I want you to see where the church appoints him to serve. Over kitchen. If I would be Stephen and I do crusades worldwide and I can run my mouth really good. And I have faith and I'm full of the Holy Spirit and the church puts me in the ministry to serve over kids ministry or over you know maybe particularly over food or over ushers and with that kind of anointing I will say uh excuse me do you know who I am did you see my YouTube channel do you know how many subscribers I have for my podcast do you know how many followers I have on my Facebook did you see the latest miracle that God used to do did, do you know my where I've been to school for Bible college I would accuse the church of not having discernment of preachers because <laughs> you know there's gift of discernment of spirits discernment of men of God but see the church wasn't concerned to make sure that the position matched his potential they were just careful to make sure his gift wasn't bigger than his character if you're taking notes write this down it's okay if your potential is bigger than your position it's okay if the job you're doing outside of the church right now is smaller than you it's okay what's not okay is if your character is smaller than your gift your skill your education and your position God is not sweating in heaven because your potential is bigger than your title God is making sure that your gift your skill your population, your popularity, your anointing is not bigger than your character. Why is that very important to God? God is not there in heaven making sure 
your potential matches your position that is not his number one concern his concern is with our character if you're taking notes I want you to draw this down our value does not come from our visibility one of the reasons why sometimes the Lord puts us in places that are smaller than our anointing is to teach us that your value is not connected to how visible you are your value is not connected to how people see you how many people know you and how many people report to you as a human as a Christian your value is connected to what God says about you not what men see in you let me say that again your value is not determined to what men see in you it's what God says about you we must understand men will always see later what God says earlier God will say you're the king it will take man 13 years to say uh-huh yes you are the king God will say this is the son of God and it's a baby it will take man 30 years later to say this is the son of God God will always will say about you what will take man decades to see in you and sometimes God will allow positions in society and certain lack of visibility so that you anchor your identity not in what men see in you in what God says about you before God will before men see men appoint us God anoints us and God always anoints us first but it takes time for men to appoint us and never blame people for not appoint you for not appointing you because God has anointed you it will take time and that time is specifically strategically positioned so God can flash out wrong identities that will be based on what men see in you because when you have to live for 10 years relying on what God said about you everything man says afterwards don't move you they can say you're crazy you say I heard worse from better people they can say they said about Paul you're God because he shook off the snake and didn't die it didn't move him why because Paul already knew what God said about him for years before this incident God will allow a season where your position is way smaller than your anointing so that you don't depend on men's compliments or criticisms to make you valuable if my heart says I'm not valuable because I'm not visible so therefore I'm gonna climb out of the chest and stick myself on his lad's forehead my heart's drive for visibility will kill my body many people are obsessed today with visibility that a lot of times they come out of their calling out of the pace God put them in and they actually die spiritually trying to be visible if God puts you as a forehead shine as a forehead but if God hits you behind a chest as a heart don't strive to be visible for the sake of visibility your value is not determined by your visibility your value is determined by the position God placed you in right now and by the presence of God and by the people you're surrounded by and by the principles you live by that my friend is where your value is dependent on Bible calls the church the body and the body there are organs in our body right now in your body and in mine that are so valuable in fact they are way more valuable than the organs people see and it would be foolish to say that just because those organs are valuable they have to be visible not everything that is visible draws its identity draws its value from the stage the popularity being known and being visible we live in a generation today whereas maybe 10 years ago everybody sought to be prosperous today everybody seeks to be popular if you're popular you become rich you're popular you literally your life can change and we have this drive in our generation for popularity popularity 
is influence and that influence is responsibility. God grants us, God gives us that. But to live your life seeking popularity instead of seeking purpose is equivalent to taking your heart out of your chest and sticking on your forehead. You know people who do that. You look at them and you're like, man, you don't belong there. You look at it, he's like, this is disgusting. It's like you're trying to do something. You're trying to be somebody. You're trying to copy these, you know, people on TV. You're, you're, trying, you're trying to be somebody. That's not even you. You don't even look good on that thing. Stick yourself back in your chest and keep pumping blood. Keep being an organ that is valuable even though you're not visible. And God put Stephen in an invisible place in the church. But he was still valuable. Another thing that I want to point out and I already kind of mentioned is that your title doesn't determine your identity. What determines our identity is our relationship with God. Can somebody say amen? God trusts those he tests. A lot of times God will test us by putting us in a position that is smaller than our potential, our anointing. The calling of God upon our life. The dream God has given us. And God will do that to test us. It speaks in Psalm 105 verse 17. It says the following. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with feathers. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. I want you to see this. The rejection, abuse, and offense Joseph experienced was not just that he was surrounded by jealous and bad people. The scripture says that God's word tested Joseph while his feet were being hurt, while he was being rejected, while he was being falsely accused. All of this stuff, it wasn't just bad people. It was actually God testing him so he can trust him. God loves everyone the same. But he trusts people differently. In my family, my father and my mother, they love all of five siblings in my family the same. But they never trusted all five siblings the same. Now I was always accused being the oldest that I was born with a silver spoon, gold spoon, a diamond spoon. I was accused of everything that you can think of and from, from my siblings. And it was not you know, easy being the oldest. But one thing that I did was really well is the fact that I knew that if I wanted to have certain pleasures and certain things given to me by my parents, it's not about appealing to their love. I had to earn their trust. So while my other siblings, you know, did different things, I tried to earn their trust. And so my dad and my mom, they trusted me. Even as a little kid, you know, I tried to clean my, clean their car, clean the house all the time. Uh, milk the cow, feed the pigs. That was BC days before coming to the United States. I did all of this stuff, cleaning the house so good. I remember one time my mom came back home and she had like little pennies in her pocket. She pulled all of that and gave it to me. She says, wow, the house smells so good because I knew the way to her heart, you know, it's to serving, it's through helping. And through that, I earned the trust. At the age of 20, you know, my dad, he trusted me and he helped me to get a loan. He co-signed for me, which is not a good thing to do. Parents usually don't co-sign and shouldn't co-sign even for their kids. And the reason why my dad did it is because he trusted me. I paid things off to him. And then he trusted me with another thing, trusted me with another thing. And I seen my parents' relationship with me, there was more trust. And my other siblings, they're great siblings, but at the age that I was in, the way there was a problem with trust and they accused them, they said, well, Vlad got this and that. And it's not that they got loved less, it's that they trusted me more. It wasn't better. I just simply earned their trust. You have to understand, God treats all of us the same in the reference to his love. But God will trust each person in this room differently. And he cannot trust you if he doesn't test you. And sometimes what he tests you with is he puts you in a position, Stephen, that is smaller than your potential. Joseph, sometimes he tests you. He lets people be jealous of you and do some things that are hurtful. And God is looking, will you fight back or will you trust him? Sometimes God will put a crazy woman who wants to have sex with you and God will test to see, can he trust you with promotion because he's testing you with purity. God will put David in the palace but you have to understand is that David has an anointing to be a king there's only one problem with that is his destiny 
the place is not vacant there's somebody sitting there to be a king and God is testing David will David get offended that his family is not seeing the great anointing on his life and they're sending him back to the sheep a position smaller than his potential or will Dave, David be at that position and say well since I'm bigger than this position let's do some bigger things let's kill lions let's kill bears let's develop a testimony let's create history with God see before David killed Goliath he killed lions a lot of people want God to trust them with the Goliath but God will test you with the lion before God will trust you with the publicity he will test you privately where a lion and a bear insecurity in, uh, pornography maybe jealousy maybe certain hurts from the past will come attacking you and there you are complaining I have a great destiny nobody believes in me nobody sees in that they stuck me with this crazy sheep you know there's more to life everybody's not discerning that God is testing you he wants to trust you but he is testing you don't fail the test see this about David he goes finally to the palace he kills the Goliath and you would think that David now will be trusted to be a politician you know that the first job David had in the palace it was not a king it was a musician you have to have enough courage to work as a musician in the place you're anointed to be a king many people would never play music in the place they're called to reign before David became a king he served a king he was tested before David led he played music I wrote this down David shepherded sheep before leading a nation David killed lions privately before facing giants publicly David started as a music as a musician in a palace before called, God called him to be a king David drove out demons before he drove out Philistines David was an armor bearer before he was a king all while he was anointed to be a king why because God loves you the same he trusts us different and that trust is based my friend on how you pass the test God's love won't change for you but his trust would be different if your anointing is bigger than your bigger than your title bigger than your position bigger than what men see you don't be frustrated with men anchor yourself in God work with what you got be faithful be fruitful men will see different men will appoint you Jesus says if you're special and you sit on the back he said man will bring you to the front but if you run right away to the front and you're not that special <laughs> men will put you back <laughs> he said you'll be embarrassed it's okay if you're bigger than your position what's not okay is if your character is smaller than your anointing the second thing that I want to point out from this story is position does not restrict anointing ego and laziness does position so I want you to see Stephen gets put in a position that is way smaller than his anointing the guy the guy could do crusades worldwide the guy could speak and preach and do teach Bible seminaries so well thought of his sermons are way better than even probably Apostle Peter's and Apostle Peter if you're listening I'm sorry didn't mean to hurt your feelings but Stephen's sermon was like like legit and Peter's sermons were very quick and very short Stephen was the guy yet he was put in a smaller position but I want you to see that Stephen didn't get offended at the Peter, at John and James and say guys that's not fair. I can preach better than you. I can heal better than you. I can through the power of God do wonders better than you. I have full, I'm full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. I'm better than you and you're dumping me into something you guys don't want to do so you can spend more time with God. Like you should invite me into the, to the big league. I should be with the big boys. Not put over there over the kitchen. You go take care of widows yourself. Give me, give me the big stuff. Stephen doesn't get offended nor does he let his position in the church say okay well since they're letting me only hand out food in the kitchen that's all I'm gonna do I'm just gonna be faithful with the food and the anointing I have to heal the sick the power of God I have to cast out devils the dreams and visions and prophetic gifts and utterances that I have other things that I have that they're not letting me do here 
well so what I'm just gonna put him on the back seat and wait until somebody will see that and give me a place Stephen said this in church I will do my best to make sure every widow is taken care of and when I leave the church I will cast out demons like it's nobody's business I don't need a platform I'm gonna go to the park Peter doesn't need to invite me to speak at the apostolic church I just need to heal three blind people in the park and I have a crowd I don't need the platform I just need a camera a microphone and a Facebook account I don't need that he doesn't I don't need him to help me build my anointing he's not restricting it by putting me into a smaller position what's restricting me is two things ego I'm offended they didn't see it in me and secondly is I'm lazy instead of developing other skills and instead of developing other graces instead of learning how to play guitar since they're not hiring a king in the palace instead of learning to how to translate dreams and developing that gift because Pharaoh is not hiring a prime minister what, they, what these people do is they develop other gifts on the side because they're not lazy and then they sneak in into their calling even though they never changed their position don't be a rock be like water rocks need open doors they're stiff and they're too big water doesn't need an open door water needs a crack water is fluid calm but forceful and many people they're like a rock they they're so special in their own eyes they're so important that if you don't give them a place if you don't promote them if you don't confirm and you don't encourage their gift yeah I don't think I can do it if you don't push them motivate them babysit them spoon feed them hold their hand and constantly tell them nice words no I won't succeed I'll never do anything outside of my position why nobody's encouraging me nobody believes me my mama didn't tell me I was special my daddy didn't tell me I was special so my position is restricting my influence don't get offended but it's not your mama it's not your position it's your ego and it's your lazy you have a lot of time and if instead of benching, benching on instead of benching on Netflix and instead of watching all the latest movies if you would develop some other skills and develop some other things and exercise your anointing outside of your position God will use you no less just because your position at your work or in the ministry now doesn't match your potential come on somebody anointing doesn't need a title to operate it needs a problem to fix anointing doesn't need a title to operate it needs a problem to fix we shouldn't seek a stage to shine on we should seek an opportunity to serve some people are always looking for a spotlight to shine on them God, scripture says you are the light that means you have to shine you don't need somebody to give you a light give them a light you don't need a stage you just need an opportunity as a person you need to find a need and fill it find a hurt and heal it find a problem and solve it the anointing of God upon your life does not need a stage God's anointing didn't wait there and says until David gets a crown we can't do anything God's anointing says David don't need a crown David needs a lion David don't need people to say oh my gosh David is such a man of God David needs a bear David needs a Goliath, David needs cancer, David needs arthritis, David needs a sickness, David needs a problem. He needs a problem to solve and if you are good at solving problems, God will promote you. God will elevate you. God will open new doors for you. Can somebody say amen? Please understand the anointing upon your life. If, if people hate you, if people hate you and they really want to stop you and you really feel like there's a spirit, demonic spirit operating through a pastor just holding you back cutting you out all the time if you're truly anointed no demon can stop you because you're like water did you see tsunamis cannot be stopped by our nukes they cannot be stopped by nothing if you're like water 
you don't need a crack you don't need somebody to roll a red carpet for you somebody to constantly pep talk to you you just need a crack you just need a small opportunity where you can help somebody where you can help somebody and next thing that happens you will come out into a new season into the new room into the new level you will come out to a new position why because you are flexible you are fluid and because you bring benefit and help to other people don't be stiff don't be too solid don't be too ego driven don't think too much of yourself be humble in your mind and God will exalt you at your due time somebody give God some praise right now somebody who is fluid in their spirit give God some praise right now somebody who knows you're going to a new season in your life give God some praise right now pride will not let us succeed outside of our position ego will not let you succeed as a slave because you've been called to be a president Joseph ego will not let you succeed as a musician because you're too anointed to be a king ego will never let you go back to the sheep just because you got anointed to be a king ego will never pick up a towel just because you have a title that you're a son of God see in order to succeed in a calling you have to swallow your ego. Jesus simply picked up a towel. He had the title as the Son of God but in that moment it didn't matter. People whom God will use are people whose egos are small and hunger is big and a lot of times the only thing that we have that's big is our ego. Our passion is small, our prayer life is small, our desire to learn is small, our desire to improve our skills, to grow in our grace is small and the only thing that's big is inflated version of ourselves it's like a balloon we're walking it's so touchy god forbid somebody touches us the wrong way that's when you know you're inflated not anointed inflated Stephen wasn't inflated he was easily said yes if you need you guys need me to serve uh, at the kitchen i'll serve at the kitchen but that doesn't mean that i'm gonna stop serving within my gift and I don't need Peter to sign off on that. If Peter is okay with me going on the streets, I'll preach on the streets. If you have an anointing to preach, if you have an anointing to heal the sick, if you have a ministry inside of you, if you really have that, you don't need somebody. What you need is you need to stop thinking of yourself too highly and being offended that people don't see it and find opportunities where you can serve. And you will be surprised how those crazy small opportunities like playing music for Dave, for Saul will lead to becoming his armor bearer, becoming a general, becoming a fugitive and then becoming a king of a one tribe, becoming a king of all the tribes. God's calling will take you to the throne. But God will take you through a process. God will take me through the process where he will kill insecurity. Where he will kill my little petty little self-esteem, petty little self-importance. He will put that down. And the only thing that will be important is God, what he said about me and how he sees me. Can somebody say amen? Don't leave the church just because you're famous on the streets. There's a temptation that happens is this, is the moment the ministry gets big outside, we want to rub it into the people on the inside say well you didn't believe in me look what God did I'm leaving starting my own international LCC or uh, my own international ministry Stephen never did that the only reason why Stephen left because they killed him I see a lot of people who sometimes they get limited they feel like they're limited in the church you know especially those of you coming from other churches you, you come and you're like man in the other church I was an apostle in the other church I was I was this and I was that and please understand um, in order to prove that you were that serve reference letters are good your videos on YouTube that you prophesied in the other church are amazing the problem is this body of people they don't know you they don't therefore they don't trust you you can give the right prophecy people won't hear it you will say they won't hear it because they don't know you why they don't know you because you just came in learn to serve get to know the church let the church get to know you so that your voice will be heard not just spoken what you say is true it's just nobody will hear it nobody will care because they don't know you because they don't see your faithfulness and so no matter how popular how anointed you were and how great you are in the marketplace you have to understand you, just, you can't just come in and, and shove your title you have to come in pick up a towel and serve serve in any way show your heart first not your skills 
And lastly, so think first thing we mentioned is that your position is smaller than your potential. Don't worry about that. Make sure that your character is not smaller than your gift. The second thing that we mentioned that a position in, the, in your work and position in church doesn't limit you. It's your lack of desire to grow and your, your thinking too highly of yourself. It's, that's what's going to limit you. But the third thing that I want to share with you, and it's, it's going to pretty much slightly contradict what I just mentioned in point one. The reason why is because we, I have to mention this and we have to see, we have to correct our motives. Is that serving is not a stepping stone. Serving is not a stepping stone. Stephen, we know where in here we see, now maybe he did, but we don't see it, where he got promoted into a better position in the church because his ministry outside of the church was successful. You don't see here where Stephen, like the church saw his sermon on YouTube went viral, like outside of the church, like dude, he's going to be part of our preaching team. You don't see Stephen after a few healings, Peter's like, oh dude, man, we're going to send you to other cities as well, man, you, you're good. The only thing that we saw here is that he didn't get promoted to a better ministry. He got promoted to a better place. He went to God's glory. You can't beat that kind of promotion. God's like, you did so good. The church doesn't see it. I'm seeing it. You're coming home, sunshine. You're coming home. Now, it's true. If you are faithful, many times men will see it. Man will appoint you. God will open doors. He'll promote you. He will exalt those who walk in humility. But it's important that we don't see this thing that we are doing for God as a temporary stepping stone until King Saul dies. Until Pharaoh gets the revelation on the guy. Because then what we do is that we use the serving to build our ministry instead of God using us to build his kingdom. Plus, the Bible presents the church as the body. How many of you know, you don't promote your heart to become eyes because it pumps blood really good. You don't give your heart after five years, like, you, you've been pumping blood so good. I'm going to make you a nose. I'm going to promote you into being ears so everybody can see you. I'm going to promote you to be eyebrows so you can be on every single photo. Nobody does that with their heart. Nobody does that with their lungs. Sometimes the Lord doesn't promote us into visibility because that is really our sweet spot where we are being effective and where we are serving Him. And we shouldn't compare the function and the visibility of the heart with eyebrows and eyes because eyes cannot do without heart and heart cannot do without eyes. We all have our functions where God will reward us not based on what people thought of us. Not based on where we got invited to speak. Not based on where our books landed on New York Times. Not based on how many people followed us on social media or how many people listened to us. God will promote us on how effective the heart was beating. How effective the lungs were receiving air. How effective were eyes seeing. How effective were ears hearing. And so you have to understand, you and I will stand before God and we will give an account, not how we measured in the eyes of man, but what we did in the eyes of God. I'm all for promotion. I believe that God will exalt us, but our motives have to be pure. God will purify our motives by sometimes lingering our promotion so He can get all of the faults from our motives out. So that our motives is not, I'm using the church to build me to God using me to build his kingdom my name will die but his name will live we live for the fame of his name we don't live for the fame of our name we don't use the church as a platform to get a ministry going we use our ministry as a platform to get God's kingdom spread there is only one name that heals the sick there is only one name that drives out demons there is only one name that restores broken marriages there is only one name that hell is afraid of it is not the name hungry generation it is not the name Vlad. it is the name of jesus christ the son of the living god the name that's been exalted above every name the name that heals the sick the name that islands will trust in somebody shout that name somebody shout that name Somebody shout that name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't promote a heart to become a mouth because it pumps blood good. Don't fall into pressure. Don't live insecure. Be comfortable in your calling. Don't compare and compete. Run your race. 
I'm going to read last verse and then we're going to go into testimonies. John chapter 17 verse 4, it says the following. Jesus said this, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work that you have me to do. I love this about Jesus. He didn't live on this earth even glorifying his name. He was God. His motive was I glorified you on earth and I did what you asked me. You put me, you positioned me in a particular place. I did it. Didn't write a book. Didn't start a physical building. Didn't build a building. Didn't travel very far and didn't live very long. But he says, did, I did these two things. I glorified you and I did what you called me to do. He didn't say what people said about me because people thought he was crazy. At the end of your life, your success will depend on these two things. Lord, I glorified you. Everything I did was for your glory, not for my fame. And Lord, I did what you called me to do.